nothing that uh, you need to be reminded of yourself. You know you are good. But there are times, Lord, when we say it and when we sing it, that we might not feel it. There may be even times, Lord, where we're not believing it very much. You are good no matter what, Lord. No matter what, you are good. And Lord, what you have done in your goodness for us, this song says it so clearly that it is for your glory that you are good. We must acknowledge it and we must lift up your name for it. We've got to be a people that blesses you for your goodness. That we serve you, God, because of your goodness. You have been so good. Right now, you are so good. And Lord, you will always be so eternally good. So that means you deserve praise and thanksgiving and worship from us at all times, even for all things. Because you will always fulfill your promise that you will work everything together for good, for those that love you and whom are called according to your purpose. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because you are so good to us. In your powerful and eternally good name. <laughs> the name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. They remain standing. If you're not standing, stand up. Let's read God's word together as we venture into this fourth Sunday of deciding for truth. God's will and God's plan. Read this with me. Oh, this is out of Jeremiah, the great old prophet. Read it loud and strong with me. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. God, may you bless your word to our hearts. And Lord, may your word propel us into your service. In your precious name we pray. Again, we say amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you for always standing and honoring God's word. There's nothing that deserves the honor like him. Amen? So deciding for truth. Deciding for truth. And it's something that every single one of us has to make a decision for. What we believe to be true. And then what, when we decide for something to be true, we're saying that something else is false. And one thing that you and I do not hear a whole lot about much anymore, and we don't say it enough really anymore, that there are what we believe when it comes to, to the people of God, the, the, the family of God, the church of Jesus Christ, we believe in absolute truths. We believe that. We believe that God's word is the absolute truth. All right? It's not human made. It's not human created. It's not, it's not human theory. It's not humanism. It's not socialism. It's not anything like that. It is God himself that is true. And he actually blessed us with his word and he even blessed his, us with his word so much that he made it flesh and made it dwell among us and live before us and died for us and came back to life for us and lives right now today with us. He's right here in this room with us. So, so there is no other truth outside of God. Aren't we glad that we don't have to wander around in this old crazy world 
and try to find some truth, all we have to do, y'all, is look to him. Amen? So that's where we find ourselves in this journey of deciding for truth, specifically God's will and God's plan. God has a will, God has a plan, and you and I are so fortunate that he's invited us and wants us to be a part of it. We don't have to wonder about it. He just, he just loves us so much, and actually, he and you and I were created by God for his truth. So here we go. If you're taking notes, we're here. You and I are here because of God's will and God's plan. So right out of the gate here, understanding that honest reality is that you and I are here today because of God's will and God's plan. I just love how God makes it so clear. He, he wants to make it clear to us. He, he doesn't, it's not, he doesn't want us to be a, be a rabbit trying to, trying to chase down the best carrot. You know, it's, he, he guides us because he's made us for something very specific, his will and his plan. Jeremiah 20, read, read this with me. It's the very first part of this verse. Read it with me. Here we go. Why was I ever born? You know, there's a question here. It's a question that's been asked for thousands of years, and it still is asked today. People are wondering. People are asking. People are trying to seek out the, the answer for this particular question. Why in the world was I born? So when we're trying to decide for truth, when we're trying to understand what it means to know God's will and to be in his will and to follow through with his plan that he wants us to be a part of. It's us saying, what is the reason, God, that you put me here? Why am I here? Why do I have life? Why did you give me life? Think about it. Every one of us. We've asked this question at least once. Some have asked it thousands of times. Why am I here? Why do I have life? What's my reason? What is my purpose? What is the will for my life? What is the plan? I want to know the plan. God, please give me the plan. What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? What's step four? What's step 27? What is, what, what's the plan, God? We do wonder. We do wonder. Now watch this. Back to Jeremiah 1. Watch, watch the old prophet and his receiving of what God speaks into his life. This is, you know, right after what we read 4 and 5 of God saying, hey, this is the message I have for you. I, I, I knew you before you were born. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. This is what God says to, to Jeremiah. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Oh, watch this. The Lord replied, don't say, I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. Read that with me. Go back to the seven, please. Read that with me. The Lord replied, don't say, I'm too young. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a Denny Wilson version. Don't, hey, I'm too old. Don't say you're too old. Or even say, I'm too Whatever. We got an excuse after excuse after excuse, don't we, at times? Keep reading with me. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you, verse 8. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, 
have spoken. Oh my. The purpose of your life and mine, God's will, God's plan that he has for you and for me, is so, it goes so beyond what we can really comprehend. It's, it's going way beyond what, would, what we would deem to be happiness for our lives. It, it's, it's not about being happy all the time. No, 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 no. It's about having this deep resolve that I was made for something that was of divine nature and divinely given. God has a will and a plan for me, and I want to pursue that because that's what I want to decide for. That's the truth for me. Are you with me? Honestly, until you and I Get to a place where we understand it to be this. We're going to be so misguided and so discouraged. We're, we're going to flounder at every way and every turn that comes our way. It, it's, just, it's just how it goes. When we don't put our focus upon what God wants for us, then we just flounder. You and I, we're here for him. We're here for him. That sounds simple, doesn't it? And we can even turn to our neighbor and say, hey, I'm here for him. But when it comes to that being fleshed out, lived out, it's like, how does this all happen? How does it unfold? How do I... How do I keep myself out of the way so that God's way can be done? Woo, there's the question of the ages. How, how can I get out of God's way so that his will and his plan can be worked out in my life? How, how can I do that? I need God's help to do that because I don't want to be in his way. If you want to know that there is a reason for you being here right now in this world today, do this with me. Check your pulse. Have, have you found it? If you haven't found it, we got more trouble. We might, we might have to push pause in the message. If you have a pause, you have a purpose. You have a pause. God's will is still being done right now because you and I are here. If his, if his will is for us to be here right now, then that's why there is blood still pumping through our veins. That means that the will of God being done right now is for us to be here right now. And that means his plan is being worked out in and through us. It's not by any accident that you and I are here. And don't, don't give me the, the reason you would like to. Well, it's just what I do every Sunday morning. Ah, There's more to it than that. Oh, it just doesn't feel right to not go to church on Sunday. I, I pray that, that we get way beyond that, and that it just doesn't feel right, not pursuing the will of God and being involved in the plans of God, not just going through motions or a checklist of duties. God, help us to allow it to be much more than that, because God certainly has. God certainly has. You and I are here right now. You're online with us right now by divine godly appointment. God put this together. He orchestrated it. Well, I dressed myself. Oh, no, you didn't. God gave you the strength and the know-how to put those clothes on. Some of you have some matching issues. But, hey, you're here.
Just kidding. Gosh, read this with me. This is so powerful. I, I, just, I just saw this this week. Read it with me. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, hang on a second. This is where, this is where it just gets. Who reaches out? Who? Who is the Lord? Who? Jesus. Who is Jesus? Truth. So then the truth reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words. What's his words? Truth. Look, I have put my truth in your mouth. Oh, my. Keep going. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. So God, who is truth, touches Jeremiah's mouth with himself truth and puts truth into his mouth to be spoken. God's will for Jeremiah is the same for you and me, that we would allow God in his presence to touch us. Because when we are touched, reached out to and touched by the truth of God, it transforms us. And then what comes out of our mouth is the thing that transformed us. Truth. Not hearsay. Not humanistic theological persuasions. No, no, no. It's the truth of God. So get this. If that is true, if that's truth, what made you and me? Truth. God's truth. God. Through Jesus, who is the truth made flesh, made you and me so we, being made by God through Jesus Christ, truth made us. So we are always longing for the truth because the truth is what we are made by. We hunger after truth. Because we want to decide for what is true. We don't want any falsehoods. We don't want any misrepresentations or misinformations. God help us, I'm tired of that word. We don't want that. Because we are so enamored by and positioned to and hungering after truth. Because we don't want to decide for anything else. We're here. We're here because of God's will and God's plan. Also, number two is this. We must focus. Since we're here, we must focus on God's will and God's plan. There is an intentional decision we must make in our pursuit to the truth. We've got to focus on it. In the last couple of weeks prior to this election, how many of you are having a hard time keeping focus on what is true and what is not? There's so much going on, it's hard. Some have a difficult time even answering that question. I don't know which, I don't even know which hand to raise. I don't know what to do. People are always asking me, who are you going to vote for? Who are you going to vote for? Hear me. I ain't voting for anybody. I'm voting for something, two things that I stand for because I'm a follower of God and a, and a pursuer of Jesus Christ. Two things. That are biblical. You ready for this? 
I'm going to vote for where the strongest stance for Israel is. Why would you do that? Because that's what the Bible says. The second thing is this. I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to decide for where the strongest position for life is. Why would you do that? Because if it weren't for Jesus, we don't have life. So we as Christ followers are pursuers of life. Forget about all of this stuff, and I know there's other things that are important, but I'm telling you what, as a, as a follower of God, I'm going to decide on those two things primarily because they're biblical. Human rights, no, 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 we, we got in the, we're in the position we are because of human rights back in the Garden of Eden. They chose against God. That's why we're here now. Are you with me? It's not about human rights. It's about the decision we make to follow and honor God with our life, to live for righteousness' sake. So this is where Jeremiah finds himself. I'm too young to speak out. I don't, I'm, I'm afraid of these people. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do, God. But God is telling him plain and clear, don't you dare say you're too young. I'm reaching, I'm touching you. I'm going to touch you and, and change your life with truth. I'm going to put truth in your mouth. And you're going to speak truth no matter what the reception right might be. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to stand with you. Amen? Oh, Jeremiah 29, 11. This, this one gets a lot of press, but it is, it is true for us today. Read it with me. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Aren't you glad about that? In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. God has a will. God has a plan. And it's perfect. If we follow it, we will know that we are in the proper and right way because we are pursuing his heart above everything else. Oh, I want to know God's will. But if I want to know God's will, I have got to get to know God. If you want to know God's will and God's plan for your life, you've got to get to know God better. So I would say this, stop listening to so many people and start listening to what God's word says. If people you listen to are saying exactly what God's word says, then that's just fine and dandy. But stop listening to what is not God's truth. It will lead you astray. You'll start believing, start doing, start acting in all kinds of crazy ways. You will. I've watched people listen to people too much and their demeanor, their personality, how they act, how, they, how they're around other people, it changes. It's a spirit thing, y'all. And it's oh so obvious. That's why we've got to be in the truth and we've got to make sure the truth is in us so that there's no room for the opposite of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Psalm 33, beautiful. This, this just reinforces it. Psalm 33, 11. Read me here. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. Isn't that great? His intentions, his purposes can never be shaken. That means, I'm telling you, 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 you understand this. There is no investment that's, that you can invest your life in or your treasures in that's going to give you an, an, an eternal, wonderful re return. This is it. 
So if we invest our life into God's plan and stand firmly on his plans, his intentions, his purposes, his way, his will cannot be shaken. Got to focus our attention on God's will and God's plan. But I think if we're not careful, a lot of the first point of we understand we're here for God's will and plan. We, 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 we accept that. And then we'll even go so far to take another step or two. And we'll say, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to focus, keep my focus, my, my attention on God's will and plan. But, the, but the, to take it another step is, is a really difficult one because it's making a decision to do something with it and about it. If God's will and God's plan are going to take hold of our lives and, and it's going to be evidenced in and through our lives, we must begin <laughs> to live God's will and plan out in our life. We've got to begin to live it. Our lives must begin to demonstrate God's will and God's plan. How do we do that? It's seeking to be in the middle of truth, and that means surrounded by truth, and so that the truth is able to come into us, be reached out to us, and touch us, and out from our lives comes truth. But it's not going to happen just because God wants it to happen for you and me. He wants it to. He gave his son Jesus for it to happen. But we must decide for it to happen. Here's a question for all of us. How hungry am I for truth? How hungry am I for God? How desperate am I to live a life in truth and of truth? Oh, I love this. Jeremiah 17, for 117. This is, this is God, all right? Don't, don't get mad at the preacher today, all right? This is God. And I want you to say this with some oomph. Some of you haven't known what oomph is for a long time. I, want, I need you to put some oomph behind this, all right? I mean, God, God is getting Jeremiah's attention, and, and now God is getting our attention through Jeremiah, all right? You ready? Get up and prepare for action. Oh, you got to say it again. Come on. Get up. And prepare for action. You know what? Get up on your feet. Come on. Because th this just can't happen sitting down. Some of you got to wake up to do this. All right. Here we go. Get up and prepare, prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Do not be afraid of them or I'll make you look foolish in front of them. Verse 18. Oh my. For see today. I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall. You will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. Woo! They will fight you, but they will fail. For I am with you and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Get up. And take action. Get up. Take action. For crying out loud. <laughs> Why would we not want to take action when we know what is truth? 
Why would we be silent when we know what is truth? Why would we not want to come alongside someone with all the love of God that he has given to us and say, it's time to start living in truth. It's time to stop living in a false. It's time to stop making excuses. It's time to live in truth. Get up and do something for God. Well, I've kind of reached the point of somebody else can do it. No, 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 no. Remember that pulse you got? I'm telling you what. If it's there, you better use it for him. If you don't use it for him, why would he keep giving it to you? I mean, it's, not, it's not a scary thing to say. No, no. It's just saying you and I are here for him. So live for him. Pursue his will. Pursue his plan. You and I have proven to ourselves we are not good at trying to do our own will or our own plan. It never works. But his will is perfect. His plan is perfect. And he's just telling one of his prophets, it's time to get going with it. It's time to decide right now for truth. Bow your heads with me. Whether you and I believe this or not, God has placed a call on every single one of us. Every single one of us. Our, our call given to us by God himself is the same one that he gave old Jeremiah. Get up and go and tell them everything I told you. careful we can get lost in a sea of excuses reasons why we can't or the reasons why we don't anymore because someone said this or someone didn't say that or someone did God says to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the people or I'll make you look foolish in front of them. Brothers and sisters, we've got to stop fearing people more than we fear our God, our Creator. We are here for God's will. God's plan. We must focus our attention on His will and on His plan. And we have got to begin to make that decision to begin to live out His will in His plan. Why? Because it's the only truth we've got that's everlasting. national election does not change God's eternal word at all. So don't think 
for a minute that everything's going to be better or everything's going to be worse. God is still God. God remains sovereign. Nothing changes Him because He's eternally firm. If you know and you recognize the need in your life of pursuing His truth, which is Himself, which is His will and His plan, and there is at times a battle in doing so, would you just raise up a hand acknowledging that I need God's help to pursue Him, His will for me, His plan for me, His truth. I need Him. Just raise your hand strong. It's acknowledging I need Him to do this. I need Him to live this. I need God to follow God. I need to get to know God better. Lord, you see those with raised hands. You see your children, Lord, with hearts that are hungering, pounding, Lord, because they're realizing that there is no other truth than you. They can't turn to anything else to find eternal truth. It's just not there. But praise God's name. You are there. You're always there. You never leave. You never forsake. So we give you undivided attention, attention right now. We place ourselves at your feet right now. And we say, fill me God would you reach out and touch me with your truth transform me with your truth <laughs> and help me to live a life here for you, God. You gave us life to live for yourself. And there is no other life that can be lived that is more fulfilling, more whole, more right, more good. No other life can be lived that is true side of truth himself. Thank you, God, for divine purpose, divinely given gift of life. May each of us take hold of it, take heart of it, and decide to live Thank you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord today. We exalt the name of God today. We hold the banner high, the banner of truth. Because the truth, it's true. It always sets us free. So, oh God, may we live free indeed today because we are deciding for truth. In your holy and matchless name, we pray these words in the name of Jesus. Everyone say amen. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, you got a pulse. So let's live for God. Oh, yeah. That's good. God bless you. Love you.
Have a great rest of your afternoon. See you back here. I think, I think Pastor Bree would love to have people back even before 4 o'clock. Come on back and enjoy the time of, of the fall festival. Love on the community. God bless you.